Een moderne nieuwe forensische opleidingscentrum verschaft een broodnodige hubstoot aan die vervolging van onverkooste wildmisdade in Zuid-Afrika. We all live in one society. And one of the basic systems of society is the rule of law. If you commit a felony, you have to bring, to, bring someone to court, you know? And it's a preventive action works on that. So that's what we want, restore the rule of law. One of the smart skakels in the successful vervolging of omgevingsmisdaad in South Africa is a gebrek aan concrete bewijzen. Nauwkeurige forensische wetenschap is een van die noodzakelijke elementen. Het is een baie gespecialiseerde veld en dis waar die Wildlife Forensic Academy die eerste van sy soort ter wereld hoop om een groot verskil te maak. I am going to talk to you about the animal side, <clears throat> a little bit of wildlife forensics and wildlife crime scenes. So the chest is obviously a really good place. You can see when the animal is breathing on the chest. In 2010 het André Vos, a kenner op die gebied van menselike forensische onderzoeke en strafreg uit Nederland, vir Greg Simpson, a veearts in die groter kreevultuin, ontmoet. Die concept vir die forensische akademie is gebore vanuit die gesprek oor hoe hulle tot die strijd teen wildmisdaad in Zuid-Afrika kan bijdra. There's an opportunity there for us to actually try and improve the forensics in the environmental field and particularly in wildlife crime because it obviously makes a stronger case, a uh, strong investigation that can result in a better output at the end of the day. This facility gives possibility to make scenarios, to understand the rule of law, to see the chain of custody, to go through the whole chain starting at the crime scene at the first responders, the police, the forensics. Een in die meeste gevalle is daar die veldwachters eerste op die toneel. My name is Lauren Matthews. I am a marine ranger on the Berg River. I work for Cape Nature. We are more focused on the law enforcement and compliance side of um, the estuary. Um, so we focus a lot on the illegal netting that occurs um, in the marina and upstream. We do water quality sampling and make sure that the estuary is in good condition. The Wildlife Forensic Academy um, has invited us for training, so I'm very excited about that. For me specifically, I want to know um, how to collect the evidence is important, um, how to not contaminate the scene while we are busy collecting the evidence, and also what stands in court. Lauren is een van vijf veldwachters van Cape Nature, wat deel is van die eerste groep om opleiding in forensische wildonderzoeken bij die niet geopende academie te ontvangen. Let's just look at two prominent crimes in, or relevant uh, crimes in our national legislation. So the first one is section 571. 57 says, no person may engage. Ek het by die groep veldwachters aangesluit vir twee dae van forensiese wildonderzoek, vaardigheidsontwikkeling en opleiding. Die dag het begin met 'n lesing deur Paul Steinman, advokaat en kundige in omgewingsreg en bestuur oor kriminele reg en vervolgingsprosedures. Already been overseas students uh, that visited uh, in the preliminary phases, but uh, we are definitely looking at, at, at overseas students that will also be able to come and do training here. I'm just going to fit in basically where Phil left off this morning. Um, he also spoke about chain of evidence and the whole court procedure and how important it is. The reason why we have Forensic science, and I'm starting down at the basics now, is because of the low card principle. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. When you're talking about vehicle specific. Peter van der Weesthuizen, a forensic kenner, behandled the belangrijkheid van forensic wetenschap in the correct hantering in bestuur van a misdaad toneel met ons. Small things that we don't always keep in mind. If you touch your face, there's your own DNA on there. That glove is useless. Take it off, put a fresh one on. Our animals are just as important, our wildlife, our um, environment is just as important. So this academy has, has come at the right time, I think. Primary residue is basically the residue that, is, uh, that comes onto your hands the moment that a shot is fired. So that stays on your hands. You have to do this test within two hours after 
the incident has happened. Keep your camera perpendicular to the surface. So that means. Dan demonstreer sy die correct devices en procedures om enige vorm van bewyse op die misdaad te neel te identificeer en in te samel. You are photographing at the bottom, Shuprint expert can't make an identification. The focus is to preserving a crime scene and making sure that you prevent contamination of the crime scene. De tijd voor een hoogst geanticipeerde oomblik, de kans om een speederse schoene aan te trek en de forensische gereedschap te gebruiken. Dit voel amper of ons op een filmstel is, maar daar die gevoel word oorskadie dier die ernst van wat ons op die punt is om te hanteer. Klinies uitgerust en gereedskap in die hand is ons gereed om die taak aan te pak. We're going to follow that shoe print now. Oh yeah, here's a nice step. Die oefening spoor ons aan om bewijzen op een misdaad toneel, soos een voetspoor, nou keerig in te samel en aan te teken. What I want to show you, if you want to step closer a little bit, what the difference a light makes to photographing a shoe print, for example. So you can even see that the camera has marked it out there. Mm -hmm. Dit het duidelik geword dat dit oor mee gegaan het is om net een foto te neem, maar oor een belangrike rekord van kritieke inligting oor een misdaad wat plaasgevind het. Ons het allemaal die belangrikheid geleer van camera skoot, focus, veldtiepte en belichting in fotografiese bewys aantekening. Jeet jy, dis vir my nogal is baie interessant, dat iets so eenvoudig soos een voetspoor so een belangrike rol speel in een hoofdzaak. En vir alles die mens, nou kijk, wanneer ek nou hierdie foto gevat het, die fijn detail wat die mens krij nie, dit is eindelijk een van die meest belangrikste dinge in die voetspoor self, want dit gaan eindelijk vir jou weis aan wie die schoen behoort. The first respondent heard a shot that was fired early this morning, and we've... Uh done our initial examination. Unfortunately, the animal didn't make it. In this oefening, we have a new evidence that we can identify as the expected expectation. Ons moet die verwijstukke by mekaar maak, correct in die pakjes preserveer en die toepasselik merk. Terwijl ons die toneel gefijn kam het, was Pietro Greek en Androu boe bezig om elke stap en beweging wat ons maak, dier middel van camera's te monitor. Hulle het al ons positieve acties, sowel as ons foute, opgeneem en geidentificeer om later terugvoering aan ons te gee. Ons ervaring hier by die Wildlife Forensic Academy oorskry my verwachtinge. En die oefening spoor ons aan om te verstaan hoe belangrijk dit is om eiwerig te wees wanneer mens op een misdaad toneel werk. It's really spot on to um, conservation. Um, we need all the help that we can get and, and you know, there's, it's good to make a start somewhere. I don't know of any other facility in the world that, that does the type of training that we are focusing on now. And, and what better place to do it than in South Africa and Africa where your biggest problems are? Blood found on ground. Oh, oh very good. Mm. We, we, where's the ground? Yeah, no, number 10. Mm. How do you know it's blood? Mm. Possible blood. Mm. Right. What you would have ideally want to do is Possible rhino, uh, wet rhino blood found 10 centimeters oh, yeah. on ground from rhino horn where mm. the wind is or something. Mm. So, for example, if you were to find a fingerprint somewhere on something, you would write there that it is a finger mark found on, um, let's say, the cigarette or the cartridge casing on 0.22. You can see that at the bottom, mm. point two to cartridge casing found underneath this, pointing in that direction or whatever. So all of this has to be completed. There's a space specifically on this bag for a description. Did any of you make a 
note of the time and date that you collected this piece of evidence. At this stage, we, we've got a, a bunch of bags here. There's no numbers. This is going to go to the lab. The lab's going to tell you, you take back your exhibits. I don't want mm. this. And the attorney's going to pull you apart in court. We're not a silver bullet, but we are a link in the chain, and we want to be increase the strength of the link, the link in that chain. And um, we feel that highlighting uh, the problems and um, the issue is, is firstly our first priority and then secondly just improving skills. The suspects have fled or are they inside the vehicle? No, there's no suspects. It's a white Nissan vehicle and um, can you guys please go and follow up and see what you can find. What I want you to do is just document the evidence that you can see inside the vehicle. Ons volgende leidraad oor die verdachte motor na by een huis. Na die terugvoering wat ons oor die bewysingssameling op die misdaad toneel ontvang het, is ons akiet bewus van hoe ons moet optree. Die standaard van hierdie opleiding is baie hoog. We are connected with lots of universities worldwide and they feel all committed with this project. They bring their knowledge in. What we would like to see is that South African wildlife organizations come use the facility and work together with us. So as ons die huis binnentree, kan ek nie help om te voel dat hierdie oefening ons algehele werk verrichting by die Wildlife Forensic Academy voordat ons ons bewijse aan die hof oorlee sal bepaal nie. This is the one that's been seen on the crime scene. So Ms. Van der Westhuizen, your witness, cross-examination. Mr. Linda, I put it to you that my client that is sitting here next to me wears a size 8, a UK size 8 shoe. How do you link that pair of shoes being worn by my client? Uh, Ms. Matthews, do you have any religious objection against taking the prescribed oath? No, I don't. You use the same type of swabs for more than one scene, right? It's standard swabs, it's standard evidence bags. So that evidence bag could have been collected, or that swab could have been collected on any other scene, and you could have said that it was collected from this scene, right? It can. Right, so now we are talking about planting of evidence here. So you cannot link the poaching of the rhino to my client. Can you testify? or give any proof to this court that that piece of um, swap or that evidence was collected at the rhino scene that was apparently linked to my client. No. <laughs> the court was a, was a very interesting one as well because I didn't know anything about the court, so the court procedures and stuff, so to have the defense attorney fighting me, it was, yeah, <laughs> it was interesting. Nog nooit in my wildste drome het ek gedink dat ek eersterhands sou ervaar hoe dit is om op een misdaad te neel te werk nie, vooral een wat omgevingsmisdaad uitbeeld. Het is fascinerend hoe die kleinste besonderhede een saak kan maak of breek en dat wat jy as een forensische deskundige doen, een stem kan gee aan die dier wie seer gemaak of dood gemaak is. Alles wat ek geleer het, het my oor en my dankbaarheid oopgemaak vir die kindiges wie betrokken is met hierdie type werk. En een van die beste dinge is dat die mechanismes wat die Wildlife Forensic Academy onderrig sal help om die omgeving een beter kans te gee om te veg. After 12 years working to create the concept and see that it's bigger than yourself. Other people are using it, other people are gaining fun of it, other people are getting knowledge. And that's very inspiring. The amount of training and information that we gave you in these last two days, it was quite a lot that you had to take in, and I think you did really, really well. The yeah. more the better. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. True.